good day to kick butt on the devil. <laughs> Thank you, Master. God is faithful to complete what he started. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let's see what God's got for us today. You know, one of the things that's been going on in the, in, in the area that we spoke the last time we gathered was events and fulfillments. And that has not stopped, it's not stopped resonating in me. Everything that God has done, you know, the Bible talks about it's a shadow of things to come in the Old Testament. And those shadows were events that it were established to bring fulfillments. And we live a life of events and fulfillments. The Bible says what a man sows, he reaps. Events cause you to sow, right? And reap is fulfillments of what you sowed. So in this, everything is surrounded and, and, and established by events and fulfillments. And it's just amazing to me that no matter, uh, 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 no matter where I turn, no matter what's been going on, I keep hearing and seeing events and fulfillments. And, and the Holy Spirit is going, that's a fulfillment, that's an event. That's a fulfillment. That's a, so where every area that uh, an event has been established, there's going to be a fulfillment coming. And everything in our life. The seven feasts of the Lord are events and fulfillments. Amen? And, and it's so profound right now because that's one of the things God is establishing. He is restoring his kingdom. He's what? Restoring his kingdom. You know, what did he give to the prayers of the disciples? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It was a request. Here's, here's something to pray. Pray the kingdom of God come. He's restoring the kingdom. The kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> it's, it, it, the only way it can be in, manifested in fulfillment is, first of all, through events. So events bring what? Fulfillments. You know, when Jesus was with the disciples and he, and he hung out for 40 days and so forth, and, 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 and he told them that they would receive the Baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and, he, and, and they would be in part and like, cool, you know. But w when, is your, uh, w when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said, look at that. That's not about you, your concernment right now. That's not about, you know, you don't need to know the times and seasons of that. Why? Jesus wasn't there to restore Israel. He, he was coming. He came to restore the kingdom of God. But first of all, you've got to restore people. Because a kingdom without people is not a kingdom. Isaiah 46 and verse 8. Let's speak. Remember this and show yourselves, men. Recall to mind, O you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the what? Now, this is powerful. He declares the end from the beginning. Why? Because we live from the future to the present. And there's times when God declares the end. And that's what he's doing right now. Everything that we're seeing right now is about declaring the end from the beginning. From the ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure, calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, and I will also do it. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted, who are far from my righteousness. I brought my righteousness. I bring my righteousness near. It is not it shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger, and I will place salvation in Zion, for Israel is my glory. Now, that's why you see all of the stuff going against Israel right now, because God's cleaning it up. He's exposing all those that call themselves Jews that are the synagogue of Satan. Israel is being cleaned up right now. Praise God. 
But God declares the beginning from the end. Again, we live from the future to the present, not from the present to the future. And this is where people get caught up in. They're always living from the present to the future. You know what that does? It nullifies hope. It nullifies faith. And it puts a person in the fear. And they live a life of what if, what if, what if. Hello? Isaiah 59, first three verses. Let's speak it. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. How many of all know that? There's in a place God can't stretch out because he holds it all. That it cannot save, nor his ears heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins, transgressions, and iniquities. And your sins have hidden his face from you. So that he will not, what? Hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue has muttered what? Perversity. Sins, transgressions, and iniquity separate us from God. So there's something God's got to do. Restore his people first. He's got to reconcile his people back to him. That's why judgment. That's why all kinds of things are going on. That's why there's a shaking and a quaking. He's trying to wake people to run back to him. Romans 5, 6. What's it say? For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That was the event to bring what? Fulfillment. That was the cross. Much more than having now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We're saved from the wrath. Does everybody get it? We're not accounted for the wrath of God. Unless you break covenant with him, then you're going to get it. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Wow. So he's got to restore his people. We've been restored through the blood of Christ. It was an event that Christ made, amen, to restore his people through the cross. Again, this is the process of restoring his kingdom. Acts 3, verse 17. Yet now, brethren, I, I know that you did things in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who has preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of what? Restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. Now, this is so powerful because the kingdom of God's got, uh, got to be restored. It's the final episode, the final fulfillment of God creating, the, uh, uh, fulfilling his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And then once Jesus does this, he turns it over to dad. So there's something ab about this event through the cross of fulfillment. One of the things God gra granted me and you is not only reconciliation, but redemption. We are redeemed. We've been rescued. And that allowed me and you to be a citizen in the kingdom of God. So we are now dual citizens. We are, dual, we are a citizen of the natural, but we are a citizen of the spiritual. You know, not many people can say that. They have no idea that there's an opportunity to become a citizen of an eternal kingdom. 1 Corinthians 3, in verse 9. 
For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on these foundations with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's works of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. You know, through the reconciliation of God, God has reconciled humanity. As we become a dwelling place of his spirit, there are master builders. Paul has always expressed he was a master builder. In other words, we must learn how to build this temple. We must learn how to know what's in it and how to maintain it. Because the final event for fulfillment is the building of the tabernacle. The final feast is the feast of tabernacles, which is so powerful. And I don't know if you know or not, but right now, in fact, I saw it on YouTube this morning, they're getting ready to sacrifice the red heifer, which is a prophecy of fulfillment. And so all the uh, Palestinians and so forth and all the Arabs are freaking out because they know that this is a fulfillment of prophecy. And they do not want that red heifer. They have like six of them. And once they sacrifice that red heifer, a lot of trouble is going to happen in Israel. Because that's one of the final fulfillments, which was an event that started off right in the Garden of Eden. What did the Lord do when Adam and Eve sinned? He took an animal and did what? Sacrificed it. And then he covered them with it. And then he showed Adam and Eve how to please him. He showed them that through humbleness, humility, and repentance, you sacrifice offerings, and the blood will cover you. It won't remove it, but it will just cover. Only Jesus could remove it through his blood. Everything else was just a covering. But see, Cain refused to cooperate. That's why God rejected him. Abel cooperated. He gave him the blood, the sacrifice of offering. Cain gave him stuff out of his garden. Abel gave him living blood. <laughs> so in the reconciliation of God to humanity, as we become a dwelling place of his spirit, we become a dwelling place of his spirit. So as we become a dwelling place of a spirit, that means we're going to build his kingdom. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we're dead in trespass, has made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you've been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Remember, grace is God's plan. That's not some uh, special favor. It's God's grace is his plan. Amen. For by grace you have been saved through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? Workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. What's a good work? Building his kingdom. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship and should be restoring his kingdom. Because that's what we're called to. In John chapter 2, verse 13.
It says, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep, doves and money changers, doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, come on. Jesus went in there armed and dangerous. He drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. Man, he kicked butt. Those guys were freaked out. Who was this dude? What boldness and authority he had. This guy had no fear at all. Come on, people get messed with their money, they want to kill. And he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. So the Jews answered and said to him, what sign do you show to us since you do these things? And Jesus said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. <laughs> then the Jews said, it has taken over 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking to the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. <laughs> so Jesus being the way, truth, and life, is the eternal port to heaven, was in aligning himself with the tabernacle of God, proclaiming to be the three chambers of the tabernacle, the way, the truth, and the life. Does everybody understand that? And because in the Old Testament, Moses was commanded to build the tabernacle, right? So there would be a place where God could meet with them. It, so in the Old Testament, it was an event. In the New Testament, it was a fulfillment. But the tabernacle <laughs> would not be built with hands as a location. It'd be in his people who are born of the Spirit. So the first three feasts of Passover on leaven and first fruits were fulfilled by Jesus dying on the cross, descending into hell, and becoming the first fruits of the dead at the resurrection. His fulfillments are now our events. I'm going to say that again. His fulfillment are now our events. Fifty days later of his resurrection, he poured out a spirit. It's called the Feast of Weeks. We call it Pentecost. That was an event that had to be fulfilled. Amen. Oh, glory. So now we've been uh, empowered to do two things. Fight and build. Do what? Fight and build. Of course, God's given us the keys of the kingdom. When we bind loose, bind devils, cast out demons, lay hands on the sick. Amen? That's all a part of building. Leviticus 23, 33. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. For seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall... Offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly, and you shall do, do no customary work on it. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering, and a grain offering, and a sacrifice, and drink offerings. Everything on its day. Now, you and I, we have a sacrifice of praise now. Because be, because we are the temple of God, in me and you is the way, truth, and life. Why? Because we can guide people in the way. We can tell them the truth, and they can receive life. 
And now your words, your mouth, your lips is the altar of God. It is offering up the sacrifices of praise. Amen? So the Lord told Moses to build a tabernacle of meeting. Play so that God, uh, he'd have a place so that he could speak to his priests, his people, and as messengers. Now remember, God didn't speak to everyone. He spoke to Moses. He spoke to his brother. He spoke to the priests. Amen. And, 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 but again, it was an event to bring a fulfillment where God would speak to everyone because then we would be his temple. Oh, glory. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one what? Deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, this is kind of funny to me. Here we have a false God in a carnal temple. Hello? A false God in a carnal temple. It's just a building. It's not really the true temple of God. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of the lawless one is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do until he is taken out of the way. That's us and the Holy Spirit. Then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who, are, who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Has that been going on for a while? Yeah. And for this reason, God will give them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that they may be condemned who do not believe the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. False God in a carnal temple. But people won't get it. They're going to worship him. Oh, my gosh. They're going to freak out. He's going to have signs and wonders and deceptions. And, you know, these are people that have been taken captive already. Because they don't know the end from the beginning. But you and I do. That may, we know. We know when the son of perdition is revealed. And he stops the sacrifice. We know that we have three and a half years left. Does everybody understand that? That's when you quit your job. Say, heck with this stuff, man. I need to go tell somebody about Jesus. <laughs> Revelation 12 and verse 7. Now we have the summary of all things. <laughs> and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And a dragon and his angels fought, and they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the what? Serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you with great wrath because he knows that he has a what? Short Time. Revelation 21, verse 1. 
Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his God. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 20 and verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, or had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for what? A thousand years. This is called the millennium. But the rest of the dead did not live again until after the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, does everybody understand that? Because those who've been right with God all the way, and so God is going to, we're going to go through all the feasts of fulfillment, but we know that the rapture has to come first. Amen? So the next feast to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets which is the rapture, then the Feast of Atonement. That has to be fulfilled. And that's what we call Armageddon, the battle, the great battle, most likely World War III. And then the Feast of Tabernacles, which Jesus will come with me and you because we'll be home. Remember, we're not involved in the wrath. We'll return with Jesus. Jesus will set up his kingdom and his tabernacle on the earth, clean everything up, for 1,000 years, he'll take Satan, he'll bound him, bind him and his cohorts. There'll be peace on earth for 1,000 years. It's called the millennium peace. So everybody got this? Okay. That's why in, this is also the first resurrection. This says verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the 1,000 years were finished. We will have glorified bodies then. Oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can eat cake. I won't bother you. <laughs> I doubt there'll be any cake or twinkers or donuts there. I'm going to tell you that right now. You won't have a, sh a taste for sugar anymore. <laughs> you can't be deceived. <laughs> and, but it says, blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over the second resurrection, second, death has no power. But they shall be priests of God, of Christ, and shall reign with him for a thousand years. Isn't that wonderful? That's the final tabernacle, the fulfillment. Now, when a thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. Can you imagine all of the powers of darkness not influencing you? You won't have a goofy thought anymore. Your flesh won't be flesh. You'll be fleshless. 
And he, he, he'll be released from prison. He'll go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog, Magog, and, all, and, and to gather them together to battle whose number is at the sand of the sea. Now, these nations must be corrupt because they're going to be deceived. But the United States has a covenant with God. Jerusalem has a covenant with God. And every nation has a covenant with God will know the truth and will be protected. They went up on the breadth of the earth. That means they were under the earth. And surrounded the camp of the saints and beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Remember the, the events and the fulfillments. And I'm going to close at Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, do not worry. Hello. <laughs> do not be fearful. Do not be anxious. You get so filled, you don't care. Doesn't matter. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? <laughs> or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be what? Added to you. So what the snap? Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about, about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Listen, deal what's on your table today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Amen. You're not in tomorrow yet. We're past that. We're past tomorrow. We live from the future. We're living from heaven. The final fulfillment is the tabernacle with us in glorified bodies and priests and ministers to the Lord. That's awesome. See, keep this in mind while things are going to get crazier on this planet. Okay, God's a shaking and a quaking and exposing. So no matter what happens or what comes about, whether we lose power, lights, no matter what happens, if we're in darkness for 10 days, it don't matter. We're the light. Remember, the Egyptians went in darkness for three days, and the Israelites still had light. So will we. Again, we're not counted for the wrath of God. We're counted for the blessings of God. We are his righteousnesses and workmanship. So if you are a kingdom builder, you will be blessed. Not a self-builder, a kingdom builder. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word and preparation for the things to come. Knowing where we are in this end time and knowing that every event has a fulfillment. So, Lord, please have mercy upon us and let your grace abound abundantly. And protect what's been spoken to us. That we may be prepared for what's coming. And know all things through the anointing of Christ that tells us things to come. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name.